And welcome back here. Mark Oppold, as uh, Tim says, we begin our day here uh, about 15 minutes away from opening our grain and livestock trade. And has been the rule here every day, starting out the day, heading with our friends to Allendale. Uh, friends from Allendale, Rich Nelson joining me. Rich, uh, ready for a day here uh, as we uh, get into midweek. Uh, looking at this uh, grain trade, I kind of uh, was talking to some other traders here yesterday, kind of making that switch now from weather and all what's going on in South America to weather and what's going on right here in our backyards. That's exactly right here. We do have some people discussing this. Uh, of course, the forecasts still show, for the most part, Midwest will see very clearly above normal precip here these next uh, few weeks. So this may give us some slight delays there and some talk about. Uh, and it may slow, uh, slow up some of this uh, southern planning, which has been going on on a pretty aggressive pace. Uh, one thing we're supporting as far as today's trade is this idea this, uh, that well, that these rains coming for Argentina, portions of Brazil may be a little heavy this uh, this coming weekend and may give us a, a slight balance here as far as today's trade. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about the uh, south and southeast uh, where that rain has come. They, they need the moisture, but it seems like we always get ahead of ourselves, though. Maybe this trade will, too. Uh, you know, the, 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 the calendar, you know, is reading the 5th of uh, April, not the 5th of May. So it's not like we're going to be late getting this thing planted in any area of the country. That sure is right. And uh, one thing we got to keep in mind here is, though, though we can all suggest, you know, the, the crop's going to get planted, no real serious yeah. problem as far as that goes. We still have to recognize that the market wants to recognize that there is some risk involved, and therefore, they oftentimes they want to price in these type of delays. We want to talk about these outside markets here. We get the Federal Reserve, of course, their FOMC meeting concluding later today. Uh, don't expect anything really coming from their minutes. Uh, but what does Rich think about that? You know, as far as the uh, the meeting here, I don't think, or excuse me, the release of the, minute, of the minutes, I don't think that's going to be a, too much of a big issue for us as far as today's discussion. Uh, maybe this uh, survey, the ADP employment survey, which comes out every Wednesday ahead of uh, uh, ahead of the government's own and, or own monthly employment numbers, mm. this ADP survey said 263,000 jobs. I believe that was the best in two years. So good to see that uh, that survey there. Very good. Uh, then uh, back to the commodities here, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at South America. Of course, we get every it seems like every year these uh, laborers take advantage of the season and the harvest and a uh, little bit of a protest. We understand that some of these major ports. That sure is right. And of course, like you mentioned, this is a seasonal issue. We know these type of, uh, of issues come up here, and, and this may give us some, uh, some slight delays and some uh, little setbacks in the short term. On the positive basis, I don't think we're, uh, we're going to see these, uh, these issues last too long, mm -hmm. at least for this year's discussion. Very good. Uh, also, separately, we have that 930 uh, it, uh, numbers as far as the ethanol production from the EIA. Uh, that will be closely watched and may add a little more support to corn later on. And we're also uh, hearing about a surge in palm oil. Uh, is that weather related or uh, demand situation? Or uh, what, is the, what do you know for about the palm oil and, and the supply demand there? And right now, the, uh, the expectation that this is a moderate uh, demand uh, issue here is for the short term. Uh, one, thing to keep, one thing to keep in mind here is they are expecting this rising production, and this may actually begin to show up here in the coming days. Uh, so as far as this nice rebound in palm oil, good to see, helps to, uh, support us on the soybean side here in the U.S., but uh, whether it's a lasting issue, I'm probably not going to get too excited about it. Very good. And then the wheat here, we understand that Algeria, Japan, and South Korea are already in for some wheat. Uh, U.S. have a chance for any of that uh, Algeria or uh, Japan uh, business? You know, as far as the Algeria issue, probably not too much on that side, but uh, I, I can definitely say on the uh, Japan uh, the Japan tenders, we probably will pick up about three-quarters of that. So good to see as far as some value-based buying going on. Very good. Rich Nelson, thanks for joining us here. We're going to have you on, put you on hold here for a minute uh, and have you back in a minute. And we'll talk about the livestock trade. We are about 10 minutes away from opening the uh, cattle, feeder cattle and hog futures. We'll see what Rich Nelson thinks about that coming back after this. Twenty minutes after the hour means ten minutes away from opening our livestock trade uh, on a Wednesday. Back to Allendale and Rich Nelson joining us by telephone as he does most every morning here to start the day. Rich, really appreciate the time and our partnership now beginning with our friends uh, there at Allendale. Uh, overall beef trade here, uh, got that big discount. Wow, eighteen, nineteen dollars on the June futures uh, to where the cash is. The I guess the what I, have, I just saw the ten-year average is about ten dollars. 
That's sure is right. So we had this dramatic rally here, which has gone on about uh, two or three weeks uh, longer than usual. Obviously, we've seen quite a rise in beef prices here in, in the past few days or past few weeks. But as far as right now, the focus is on this rising supply issue. This extra 32,000 head added to this week's show list mm. uh, certainly suggests that, hey, we are now on the path towards starting that the seasonal rise higher in offered supplies. And uh, certainly as far as the market goes, uh, in our opinion, uh, that discount is certainly needed in this particular year. And we'll have a summary here in a minute, but I want to get your thoughts before we let you go on the pork complex here on the day here. Uh, pork exports uh, up about 16 percent from a year ago for the month of February, uh, but we, that production is not going to drop a whole lot first quarter to second quarter. You know, not too much at all. In terms of uh, this goes, usually there's about a two to 300 million pound drop off in offered production in the second quarter. This year, based on our numbers, it's going to be a little tight, uh, only about a 136 million pound drop off. And this may not stop us from, uh, from uh, uh, having that seasonal rally, but our concern is maybe what is the starting price if we're going to start this rally we've talked about before mm -hmm. uh, in this next couple of weeks here. Very good. Rich, thanks for your time as always. Look forward to uh, getting things started again tomorrow morning. And uh, thanks to our great friends there at Allendale. Great. Thank you. Have a good day. Rich Nelson joining us uh, live here as he does every day. Let's get to the uh, livestock summary here. As we mentioned, uh, kind of summarizing how we get started on the day in the trade here. No trade for cattle here yet. We do have the Fed Cattle Exchange from Superior Livestock coming here at uh, 10 o'clock Central Time. And I just uh, took a look there. They have about 3,500 cattle lined up for that online auction. But so far, no trade in the country. We are getting some packer bids. What you're seeing, those of you uh, that are watching RFD TV, those those of you tuning in on Rural Radio Channel 147, uh, cash bids from Packers at 124. Now, the uh, feedlots are asking closer to 130 for those cattle early on here. And uh, on a dress basis, uh, the uh, Packers are out there bidding around 204, while feedlots are asking up at 210. So there's about a five, six dollar spread there, which is not unusual early in the week here. Fed Cattle Exchange may have something to say about that and getting things started later. The uh, hog trade lower, both the cash and on a carcass basis. Cash hogs topping out at 52 and a half, and on a carcass trade, about 30. 40 cents lower, and they topped out at 61 and a half. As far as the uh, egg and poultry side of things, we do see that the uh, egg price unchanged. Wow, I think about, about, about a week or so, we have, no, have not had a change in our egg price. These are prices delivered to the store at 94, 98 cents a dozen on the extra large and the large eggs, 92 to 96 cents. And our milk, we moved from the April to the May contract, class three milk, down three cents starting out the day here, 15, 15 53, 100, and Janet will start this whole trade here in about six, seven minutes. Midweek day, get started. Midweek, let's go. Okay, thanks, Mark. <laughs>